Caitlin Clark balled out today, but it doesn't mean shit. They lost. They lost. They lost to a bad team. And they lost to a bad team because they have a horrible coach. They have a horrible coach. This is the most unprepared team I've seen. Every time I talk about this lady, it's the same crap. It gets worse. She's, worse. Huh? It gets worse. It gets worse and worse. So you're practicing, and you're they turned the ball over eight times in the first quarter. Samuelson, who doesn't belong on the court, turned over three straight possessions. The Fever was shooting over 50% end of the first quarter, down nine points. Why? Because the Mystics had taken 10 more shots. Because the Fever kept fumbling the ball away. And it wasn't Caitlin Clark turning it over. It was Samuelson, Mitchell, Boston. I think Clark had two of them. But she had one and then one in the early in the second quarter. But they gave the game away in the first quarter. Turnovers early on. It was turnover, 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 turnover. Because guess who's not getting the ball in her hands? Clark. She's not getting the ball. They ran no pick and roll action with her and Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston never got in the game in, in the game at all. Aaliyah Boston then has two fouls, ends up on the bench, but again, never in the game. Your, your initial first five plays need to be running pick and roll action with her and Aaliyah Boston. You've got to get Aaliyah Boston in the game. She sat in a, she sat in Alyssa Smith to start Hull, but she's starting Hull instead of she should be starting Hull over Samuelson. Samuelson stinks. Samuelson can't guard a parked car. She looks, she makes Duncan Robinson look like Kawhi Leonard on defense. That is the worst. She is the worst defensive player I have seen in basketball. They their help is atrocious. They don't know how to shuffle their feet. They get caught on screens. The big doesn't hedge out. They just watch them run around in a circle. It, it is it is so bad watching Samuelson play defense. It's embarrassing. And the Mystics are five, or they were five and 17. They're running the same shit over and over. Kelsey Mitchell can't guard anybody either. She's awful defensively. Clark isn't great defensively. She's not very good defensively she's either. She's a defender. She's, she's better. But she, you know what? She's got more block shots than Angel Reese. She's a guard. She has four times as many block shots. So, and she, and she knows how, she, un, she's not good at defense, but she understands positioning. These other women don't understand positioning. They don't understand that you need to move in a certain angle to cut off the angle. And, and, it, and it happens over straight B lines on pick and roll right to the basket. Running the same shit over and over again. But they fall behind. They're down 14 at the half. Caitlin Clark does not come out of the game for one second. Boston's really never in the game. And you go in the second half, and they have the game at 59-50. They dump it in to Boston. Clark gets it into Boston. Boston puts up a shot that goes in. She's turning. She gets hit by the by the big for uh, Mystic, the Mystics, Colson. And this girl's really big. She's a big girl. She bangs right into her. It was a clear block. Clear block. And look, people were going to tell me I'm, a, I'm biased. It was a block. Aaliyah Boss was turning, and her elbow catches her on the chin. Basket goes in. They call a block and one. They challenge it, flips it around. Aaliyah Boss about that way had four fouls. She played with four fouls from the nine-minute mark of the third quarter all the way down to the four-minute mark. When this happened, she she elbows her in the face. It To me, it was an and one, and you want to call a technical foul, go right ahead, but there's no way in the world that that was an offensive foul. It was a defensive foul. They reverse it. Boston now gets her fifth foul to the bench. Again, why was she on the floor with four fouls with four minutes going in the third they're, quarter? Because they're down. They're trying to – I mean, at this mm-hmm. point, they're trying to get back in they the game. They were coming back. They were coming back. You got to sit her. You got, you got to sit her. She's not She's not quick enough. She's not. She doesn't play smart enough. That's, that's the thing like You got to sit her. You got to sit her. I mean, if you take her out and it gets worse. And- well, well, what ended up happening was it got real bad real fast. Mm-hmm. And they were down 22 going into the fourth. And – I mean, it was like this. She sat Caitlin Clark with two minutes to go in the third quarter, and they couldn't basically do anything. Like, they were completely inept. No, they, they, they don't have enough inept. players. Inept. Inept. Besides Kelsey, Mitchell, Kelsey being able to create. Yeah, and that, and, and that one right there with her, I mean, the, the things that she does. She can be really, really, she can really be really, really amazing or really, really, really bad. It's one of the two. But they come, but so they, they Clark comes back in the third, to start the fourth. They bring in this girl, Dantes, who's a new, who came off the injured list. They bring, they bring her in. Why didn't she play early on? She doesn't play at all, but now all of a sudden, the fourth quarter, they throw her in the game. I, I'm watching Melissa Smith. Again, why was she not starting over Samuelson? They wanted to do some defensive thing. Bro, they couldn't stop these women for shit in the first quarter. Samuelson can't guard anybody. Caitlin Clark turns it on. Caitlin Clark at 15 in the fourth quarter. 
She finishes with 29, 13, five rebounds, five steals, and three blocks. That line, that stat line has never been done in the NBA or the WNBA. It don't mean shit, though. They lost. See how, folks, I'm objective? It doesn't mean shit because they lost. And you want to know what happened in that in that little stretch? That and one they took, they reversed. It was a three-point game in the final minute. You know what also happened in that situation? Caitlin Clark, Kelsey Mitchell missed a free throw, and Caitlin Clark missed a free throw in the final five minutes of the game. So I'm watching this game as it's a three-point game. I'm like, these two just missed free throws, and this should be a one-point game. Go come back and Biden. And they're both 90% free throw shooters. So... These little things that happened, they made an amazing comeback. I mean, look, this was an example of what Caitlin Clark can do when Caitlin Clark is given the fucking ball and say, go. Do it. Just do. Just, play. just do it. Just go. She yeah. turned a 22-point deficit into a three-point game, and they should have won that game. You got to take the handcuffs off the ground. And yeah. that's what Christy saw. I think at this point, she was like, Christy, coach, I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. We're down 22. You can get back the fuck up. And she has to be like that from the beginning of the game, from when the moment starts. Like, she has to be aggressive. Oh. Ultra aggressive from when the game starts, and that's the problem with their team. She comes out sometimes; she's a little bit pass heavy, and she's trying to get everybody involved. But it starts with her. I mean, <laughs> if she don't get going, that team don't get going, and, and it looks bad. If she comes out the game, that's why she's in the game, and they try to give her little breaks by giving her little spells and not having the ball. But when she doesn't have the ball, it looks bad. It, it's, it's just terrible to look at. Like nobody else on the team could create besides Kelsey. Even Boston, she needs somebody to, to kind of get her going. If nobody gets her going, she looked like an average player. She doesn't look like a, the number one pick. She looked like you know the number fifteenth pick or ninth pick, whatever it goes. Like second round pick, she doesn't look as astonishing as she does when her and um and um Aitman got it going together. So. I mean, Caitlin tried to lead them back, but she has to be doing that from the beginning of the game, and it has to be like that nonstop. All the, and it frees up so, so much for that team when she's just jacking up shots. Even if she's missing, it frees up so much other players because the defense is literally running two or three players at her every time. So I see other people say that Adrian Reese is getting doubled. I say, no, she's not. And they show me a, a clip of like three people around her for the rebound. I say, that's after, that's after the shot went up. And people are crashing to help for the fucking rebound. But that's that's a big difference, y'all. Y'all can't tell me that y'all don't see it. Like, and and that'd be a biggest problem with us and, and people that are not objective about the game. Y'all are not watching the game. Y'all are just looking at stat line and, and this has became a, become a race war. I mean, at the end of the day, it's black versus white, um, and that's what it, it, it's, that's what it's turned into. And I don't like it. Because we're not looking at, looking at the players objectively. We're just looking at the race. And if you're black, you're supporting Angel Reese. If you're white, you're supporting Caitlin Clark. And I'm just in the middle. Like, damn, I'm just watching basketball. They could have been purple for all, for all I can do. But I'm just telling y'all how I see it. And, you know, from, and I'm going from there. They're like, I'm agreeing with you on the post. I'm like, well, I'm agreeing with him because he's fucking right. And y'all want me to not agree with him because he's white and I'm black. And we, we, we're just supposed to go at it. And I'm supposed to support Angel Reese the whole time. No, I do. I love her. I love her motor. But at the end of the day, I think Caitlin Clark is better. I think somebody who's getting guarded differently than anybody else in the league, 85 feet, I think that, that you have to that has to hold some type of freaking, you know, it, it has to be important to people to understand this, you know, the magnitude of what's going on with, when it comes to that situation. What happened? When we, when we started the podcast tonight, that was 39 minutes ago, we were at 1,075 subscribers. We are now at 1,112 subscribers. Thank you so much, people. We really appreciate it. Man. Appreciate seriously. y'all, man. Ser- seriously, this is genuine. We really appreciate that. That's so awesome. Like, we're, we're working really freaking hard to, to build this up. We've been doing this now since end of January. Well, started beginning of January on Spotify. I don't even know if we post this up to Spotify. I mean, somebody, asked me, somebody asked me the other day. They say, are y'all on Spotify? I said, shit. I, I, think that Don, I, I don't think Don's posted us to Spotify. By the way, Don just had to run because he, he has a flight out of town to make some deals. Um, and he's actually going to Iowa to visit Kaylin Clark, or her family at least, as he mentioned. But so that's why he, that's why he had to jump off. But, yeah, seriously, we've been busting our ass here trying to put out some good stuff. And – you know, it's a learning curve for us. We don't, you know, we don't, we didn't know what we didn't know. Like I couldn't, I, I didn't know how to edit a video when we first started dead serious. Like I had no idea. I'm, I'm 46 years old. I'm learning to do this stuff. Like I'm old school journalist. I have a degree in journalism. I'm old school journalist. I ran a website called inside the for 10 years with partners of mine. 
um, on the 247 network. We started it before 247, but this has been an experience for all of us, you know, even to, to the point where we're talking about the WNBA and watching, like really watching it, you know, and, and that's because of Caitlin Clark. I'm not going to sit here and pull punches. I'm watching it the way I'm watching because I, I enjoy watching her play. Yeah. I covered high school girls basketball for years for the Miami Herald. And I can tell you it was some of the worst crap ever. You're watching uncoor I mean, these young girls, these high school girls were just completely uncoordinated. And these are considered the top players in the in the state, top some of the top players in the country. I'm sitting here watching this. I'm like, this is awful. Yeah. This is 1998 to about 2000. The main area when I covered when girls basketball was like 1998 to about 2010. Um, and so it, there's been a massive difference in women's basketball. The talent has gotten a lot better. Hey, hey. Um, but Indiana today have they had two jump ball situations, and they don't get. I, I, they didn't get either of them. They didn't get either of them. And you know what makes it crazy is that you're sitting here like, when you have the bigger player in the NBA, that team almost always wins the jump ball. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, huh? I was dying to see Caitlin Clark in this situation. I hope she didn't pass it. Bro, yeah. oh, dude. The, the, they, had, they were down three. Yeah. At, did you see the ending of the game? They didn't get the rebound. They didn't get the rebound. They had the jump ball. Aaliyah Boston. How does Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston wins the jump? But did you see how they're positioned? No, listen, Smith. They're not positioned properly. They, 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 she literally hit it to a spot in between. It was Clark on one side, Lexi Hull on the other, and you have an Indi a, a, a Mystics player in between them. They did not create that space yeah. for Aaliyah Boston to, to tap it to. Yeah. Caitlin Clark should have been on the other side or Melissa Smith or somebody. You have to form that wedge. That you have wedge. to form that wedge. Yeah. And they did that twice in the last six minutes of the game. Coaching. Yeah, that's what I say. Christy sides is what do they work on? Because they don't work on defense, clearly. They don't work on help side. They don't work on anything defensively. They barely work on offense. I think they basically run the pick and roll fucking 45 times a day in, 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 in practice, probably at this point. But you don't work on situations like jump balls, and it happens twice, and they win the tip both times, and both times they don't get the ball because you're not positioned properly? That was a bad loss for me. Bad loss. It was a horrible Bad. loss. It was a horrible loss. Between that loss and the Chicago Sky loss, where they're up 15, those were horrendous losses. Now, look, and I look, think both, Atlanta, has fall, Atlanta has fallen off. So Chicago bad. and Indiana are both going to make the playoffs. Yeah. They're both going to make the playoffs. Whether, what, you know what? It depends on who, if anyone gets hot. Chicago's record uh, schedule is way tougher than Indiana's down the stretch because Indiana played all these people in the first half of the season. There is a chance to get the six seed still with the Phoenix Mercury. That's the chance you have. You have a chance to jump into six because yeah. five is gone. Five is the aces, and they, they're moving they, on they, up. They're, they're playing they, well they again. Got on, they got back on the road. Yeah, they got, they got Chelsea Gray back, and they've been playing really, really well. But your chance is to get to six, right? And But the coaching, I don't know how this woman still has a job because if I'm watching that crap, I, I, there's nothing in there that makes me want to keep her as a coach because um, to not get two jump balls is crazy. To it's me. time to Go get the Iowa the Iowa coach. Bring her over here. She's familiar with Caitlin Clark. It's about that time. Christy Sides has to go. You go get the Iowa coach. I forgot her name. I apologize. Oh, Lisa Lisa Bluter. Yeah, I don't know if she retired because Caitlin Clark left her, or she, or is this already in the works? Is, is this already in the works for her to become the coach? I, I think it was in the works. I think it was a combination of this is the end of Caitlin Clark. I'm in my sixties. In the works for her to be the WNBA coach. Be, I, don't the WNBA fever? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think. I think. Sense. I think it's becoming more possible when she's watching sense. this. It makes sense because obviously her this Christy size thing. I mean, she kind of fell into the job, but. It's not working. It's, it's nothing about anything. They they don't look like they get any better, and they had a lot of time. They I mean they they have gotten better, but some of the things that they still do should not be. It shouldn't be still be mistakes shouldn't be happening that, that, that are happening. So they need it's just this time to to get a new coach next year, man. Figure it out. Um, let the season ride out. I mean, 
It is. I mean, I would have fired her already. I'd have replaced her already before, but at this point, yeah. just let it ride out. When they were one and eight, she'd have been fired. If she was in the NBA, she'd been fired at one and eight. Yeah. At one and eight, she'd been fired. They started off one and eight. I guess you could still do it right now because you got the whole the you, Olympic you, coming you, up. You, you could. I think you could do it. And she, but the thing is, they started off one and eight, and from that point until today, they were eight and five. Yeah. So they've been so the t- they so the gap of time. So their practice time to work on the pick and roll has been very helpful to them getting better. I think these women are getting used to Caitlin Clark's passes, and that's the difference. Like, give me an example. Can you imagine it? You know why when we talk about the turnover number? Oh, my God. We're so, we, we point out the drop passes. We point them out for a reason. And we point them out because can you imagine, first of all, people that handle the ball commit the most turnovers. They just do. Let's go the, James the, Harden. The year he averaged, LeBron James has, the, has more turnovers than anyone in the history of basketball. James, James Harden, Harden, Russell Westbrook. Because he averaged six turnovers. And in a typical number for a, a basketball player, you want a two-to-one ratio. Yeah. She's, and, and she will, quite frankly, be at a two-to-one ratio. Yeah. If, um, she's in a league, she's in a league, the league in assists, man. She's going to be doing double digits every game. Two of her passes much. per game is, is not on her. Two of her turnovers per game is not on her. So that puts her around 3.5. Three to four. four. Five with yeah. eight assists, that puts her around two, two to one. Now, if you're Chris Paul, that's different. That's four to oh, one. He was like, he was like to five one. to one. Three to one, four to one. Maybe he was like five run. to one, Raise bro. On. Was, that's why they all call point guards, but point gods, my bad. That's why they call point gods. But typically for a person who handled the ball a lot, you want it to be right around 2.1. Like LeBron is usually around eight to four. Harden's around 10 to five, you know, 11 to six that year. That's what normally typical. Typical guards, people who have the ball are around. Luca is around the same thing. But so this whole turnover situation, if you really look at the game, you can't just say 5.5 or whatever it is because you really watch the game. At least 1 to 1. 1.5 of them per game is not on her. So when y'all are bringing this whole situation up, and now she's averaging 10, 11 assists a game, so when her numbers really flip, what are y'all going to say then? What are y'all going to say then when she's averaging 10, 11 assists per game with Four turnovers. Is that still too much? You know what you just did? You just did Jason Tatum. I just, oh, what are you going to say? What are they going to say now? What are, what are they going to say now? So what are they going to say then? <laughs> so, so when you talk about that, for example, the point guard thing, right? And I know we're, we're doing this. We're, like I said, we've changed our, our way we're doing things. Nick has a show. I have this show. So we're just, well, a lot of this stuff is now. We're just talking. Because we, <laughs> we, have, we have a couple of topics that we still have left that we're going to jump into before we're done. Um, but when you look at this point guard situation, the reason we talk about the turnovers and the fact that the passes that she makes have been dropped. If she passes the ball out of bounds, that's a turnover. Yeah. No problem. She had a couple today where I was just like, what are you doing? She's going to have those. She's going to have it. She's a daredevil. She, she takes chances. But when you drop layups, you drop passes that are going to be layups. First, you lost an assist and you created a turnover. And the point. on top of that, can you imagine if they, it, the reason it's not talked about in the NBA people is because professional male basketball players don't drop passes. Yeah. They don't drop passes at this frequency level. No. They might now and again. Like, if, if it hits them in the fingertip, I'm not blaming the, the, the receiver in, for Caitlin Clark. But when it hits them in both of their hands, sorry, that's on the receivers. That's a, that's the person yeah, catching usually, the ball. Usually in the NBA, when when it's turnovers, them not being on the same page, or like yeah. LeBron's IQ yeah. is so high, so overthinking for somebody <laughs> else who IQ is matching his. So he's like, "You should have cut," and they're like, "Well, shit, I'm right here." And he's like, "Man, if you did this and that, you'd have had a lift." It's not from just simple, you know, drop passes. So their their turnovers are a lot different in the WNBA. So think about if LeBron James was passing the ball in the WNBA. He'd have 10 turnovers a game or more. He'd break their hands. And Caitlin Clark is like LeBron with the ball. She has – LeBron is one of the greatest passers in the history of the NBA. You see that thing called objectivity? I'm not a LeBron fan, but that man's passing skills are incredible. He makes passes that are out of this world. And he has that skill and power. I mean, he's so strong. But he break these women's hands. So the passes that he makes that are similar to Caitlin Clark in the men's game, who's on his team right now? Anthony Davis catches it and dunks it. He doesn't drop it. It's a dunk. When she passes it, it goes right through Kelsey Mitchell's hands and it rolls out of bounds and it's a turnover. 
So not only did she lose the damn assist, she got a turnover on top of that. That's why I pointed out because it went on over and over and over and over and over again the in the first game. 15 games or so. Yeah. It's 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 slowly going down. But the first 15 games, those eight turnover games, nine turnovers, ten turnovers, that's from that. That's from that. A lot of it was from that. If she if you I'm gonna at some point I'm gonna go back through every game and watch this and just and just track it. Because I'm curious to know how many turnovers she's had because of it, but I know it's a lot. The same reason I know Angel Reese catches her own shot a lot yeah. on misses. It, it's it's there. Forty, yeah. you get layups being blocked forty times and 185 shots, and you're, you're shooting 41, 42 percent. You're missing a whole lot, and you lead the league in offensive boards by three. Yeah. Like it's not like you have three offensive boards and the next person has two point eight. No, they you have five and they have two point five. Like Asia Wilson is second in in, in the rebounding because she, she doesn't makes, have because she makes her shots. She makes her layups. She makes her layups. She shoots fifty percent from the field. If Angel Reese shoots fifty percent from the field, I promise to God that offensive rebound number is gonna drop in half. They'll probably be at like she'll be two. Like It'll be two. Game. She might average ten. I'm talking about the offensive boards alone. No, 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 no. She's averaging. So that it's going up. It's going up. Nine. Nine. Ten. Here's but and we we've also discounted the fact that. Camila Cardoso matters. She matters. She She's up. not. She takes she up takes space. Up space yeah. She takes up bodies. So we're so quick to like, people have forgotten that Cardoso didn't play the first five or six games. And those are the first five or six games where Reese wasn't having double digit rebounding games. So these things matter. All these things play together. Again, I am not taking anything away from what she's done. She's been great. But when we're talking about this rookie of the year shit, this isn't even a race. This is not a race to me. It still isn't. I, you can't go 29, 13, 5, 5, and 3. The, the only time this ever happened, and not, not, now you know, everyone makes up these things now. First time ever, first time ever, first time this. They're going to keep doing it. Because right now, Caitlin Clark's got four straight triple, double, double games, points and assists. Like Nick said, assists are way harder. And the record to the WNBA is six. I'd be shocked if she didn't break it. She's what five out of the last six though. Right? She's five of six games with with double digit double digit assists and points. Five of six, six in a row is the record. She's second now all time. Sue Bird didn't do this. Sue Bird didn't do this. Courtney Vandersloot holds the record, and Courtney Vandersloot also did it a couple times, four times in a row as well. <laughs>